Our next speaker is Michael Gauss. He's the director of the World Muslim Congress, the Foundation for Pluralism, champions the idea of coexistence through respecting and accepting the otherness of other. He is committed to nurturing the pluralistic ideals embedded in Islam through the World Muslim Congress. He is a board member of the Dallas Peace Center and an ambassador for peace with the Universal Peace Federation. Michael was also one of the founding board members of the Mem Memnicene Foundation, as well as a former commissioner at the city of Carrollton. He's a great friend of our community and in our chapter in Dallas, and he has traveled here for this convention. We invite him to address us. Assalamu alaikum. This simple greeting, whether it is the Jewish greeting Shalom, or the Christian greeting Peace to you, or the Hindu greeting Namaste, or any religious greeting, they got something very beautiful in it. That is, I want you to be in peace. And when you repeat that back to me, what would you say to me? Means I need to be in peace as well. So when we gather together, we can produce something peaceful for the benefit of all. That is the essence of the greetings in all religions and particularly in Islam. Salaam alaikum again. Upon declaration of our independence on July 4, 1776, two of the first three religious or the world leaders that recognize United States of America were Muslims. Two of the three first people to recognize were Muslims. One was the king of Morocco. The second was Tipu Sultan. He was the king of Mysore in India. And the third one was Netherlands. So the history goes back for a long time. Muslims have been a part of the United States, part of the freedom. And I'm glad those two guys jumped in and recognized and appreciated the freedom United States had achieved on July 4, 1776. Indeed, freedom is one of the most cherished values of humanity. And I'm pleased to share an arrangement of such freedom in Islam and American society in a few words uh, that most of our speakers had already shared. Please be aware for all of you that a few men in Islam, Christianity, Judaism, any religion, India, Pakistan, America, they tend to be extremists. But the majority of the people anywhere are darn good people. It is because of the goodness of the majority we have peace and freedom all over the world. Thank God for that. The very first step on American soil when an immigrant steps first time is a beaming smile. It has happened to you, it your parents, grandparents, everyone has experienced the joy. It is the same joy that when a little girl stands up for the first time from crawl, she stands firmly, you should see the beam on her face. It is the same joy when a toddler starts walking or eats his food on his own. That was the same joy in my face when I walked in New York Immigration Department some 30 years ago. I think we are proud of being an American. We are proud of the freedom America offers to us. The very next step for every immigrant is to earn the citizenship and to take the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Reciting one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, is like coming home for Muslims. Indeed, Islam rests on the foundation of Tawheed, the oneness of God, oneness of the universe, and oneness of mankind, 
with liberty and justice for all. If Quran, the holy book of Muslims, can be summarized, collapsed into one word, it would be justice. Justice involves a sense of security. When there is justice, everybody feels secure. And the trust among different people develops. When there is trust, there is peace and there is prosperity. And that comes with the freedom. Our country, United States of America, unlike all other countries in the world, started with a constitution, with law, so all of us can abide by that law and respect one another's freedom. Muslims cherish this freedom and they see the corollaries in Quran and strongly wish that other Muslim nations that they came from follow the Medina Treaty that the Imam had alluded to where Prophet Muhammad as the leader of the state, king of the state, military leader of the state, he initiated the Medina Treaty which gave equal rights and to everyone, Jews, Christians and everyone. Such was the beauty of that Medina Treaty initiated by Prophet Muhammad. In fact, Prophet Muhammad was one of the very first religious guys in the entire universe who started the interfaith dialogue. Conditions of in that Medina Treaty, the conditions of peace and war, and the accompanying ease and hardships must be fair and equitable to all citizens, whether Jewish, Christians, pagans, or Muslims. In essence, a believer will not make the freed, freed man of another believer his ally against the wishes of fellow believer. That was such a beautiful document. In fact, that was the first constitution that was inclusive, pluralistic in the world. And I'm very proud to be a Muslim, proud to be an American. Muslims thank God each time they hear the equal opportunity mantra that the State Department uh, Secretary said. You will not be denied an opportunity based on your race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. That sounds so good for Muslims. Invariably, they think of the speech of Prophet Muhammad when you hear this mantra. When Prophet Muhammad delivered this sermon in his, in his last sermon, this is what he said. All mankind is from Adam and Eve, an Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab or a non-Arab has any superiority over the other. Neither blacks are superior to white or vice versa except by piety and good action. As American Muslims we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. American laws, my friends, holds the criminals individually responsible for their crimes. If somebody commits a crime, only you, your tail, is hauled off to the jail. Your parents, your siblings, your children, your spouse, your community, your religion has no bearing on your acts. And when we hear the American system says you are innocent until you are proven guilty, it resounds with that. It resonates, resonates with us. And I think we need to follow that policy, hold the individuals responsible, not anybody related with that individual. In fact, on the day of the death judgment, one of the things that we are told, you alone are responsible for your acts, the goodness that you do. And neither your own prophet nor your siblings will be with you. You are individually responsible for your actions on the day of judgment. Let that practice be lived right here on the earth. We are responsible for our actions. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said something very beautiful. When his daughter Fatima 
asked him, Dad, am I going to go to paradise? I'm your daughter. Prophet Muhammad says, No. Say, why not? I'm your daughter, the Prophet's daughter. She said, he said, No. You have to earn it the old-fashioned way. You have to earn your own paradise. There is no free lunch. There is no free ticket. There is no free entry. There is no nepotism. You may be my daughter, but you have to earn the ticket to paradise on your own doing the good deeds. What are the good deeds? Good deeds is not necessarily praying all the times. Good deed is being good to fellow beings, the people that God has created all of us. That's what a good deed is, and that's what individual responsibility is placed so strongly on humanity, particularly as Muslims. We are responsible for creating goodness, not only for us, but for everyone around us. Thank you. I urge every one of us, each one of us, here and every place, to commit to building a cohesive America. This is the same concept of cohesive America, what Jesus Christ talked about, building the kingdom of heaven. Our Prophet Muhammad talked about paradise, meaning no one, none of us, Americans, whether we are the right-wing Americans, left-wing, middle, Jewish, Muslims, Christians, Wicca, Native Americans, none of us should be apprehensive of each other. That is why in Quran 49.3, God says, the best among you, the best among you is who learns to know the other. When you know each other, conflicts fade and solutions emerge. God bless America. Indeed, the essence of freedom is directly proportional to the ability to question ourselves. Whether whatever we believe in Islam, Prophet Muhammad, Hazrat Mirza, or Jesus Christ, anything we believe, we need to question that and form up that belief by our own questioning and reasoning. Our freedom, should, we should not let that go. Freedom is much more important than sometimes our own given belief. Now to conclude, I want to thank you for being here. This is the July 4th weekend. Inshallah, next year we plan to have a bigger event uh, where all Muslims and all Americans come together to celeb celebrate unity. God bless America and God bless our men and women in the uniforms protecting our freedom. Happy 4th.